What's a company secret you can share, because you don't work there anymore? At a major insurance company I wrote software for was very big on security. If we needed to make an update, we weren't allowed to remote into the server, even though you physically could. It was just against policy. To make an update, you had to put your changes onto portable storage. Show your it to the security guy. Use your key to open the door. Get escorted to the server. Then they'd observe you via cameras. The login, admin, the password, blank. Literally no password. We have a fake employee we transfer all our sales calls to, let's call him Jack. Our manager got her actor friend to record a voicemail message and anytime someone calls to sell us toner or warn us about our car's extended warranty, we'll say, oh you wanted to talk to Jack and transfer them to the fake voicemail. Soon, sales people would start asking for Jack as soon as we picked up, and that saved time. Some even got really cocky, saying stuff like, hey, transfer me to Jack. Sweetheart, he's expecting my call, saved us a lot of time having to talk to them, and if it was a slow day, we can always get to laugh listening to the voicemails people left Jack. This is actually genius. 23 tablespoon salt, 3 tablespoons white pepper, 12 tablespoon thyme, 12 tablespoon basil, 13 tablespoon oregano, 1 tablespoon celery salt, 2 tablespoons garlic salt, 1 tablespoon black pepper, 1 tablespoon dry mustard, 4 tablespoons paprika, 1 tablespoon ground ginger. Finger lickin' good. I worked for an IT company that provided contractors to large corporations. Upper management would use someone with exchange server access to read emails sent to client company executives from competitors and adjust bids accordingly to ensure they maintained their contracts. A few years ago, David's bridal announced that regular and plus sized wedding gowns would be the same price, like, a size 24 wouldn't be $150 more than its size 4 counterpart. They did this by marking up the regular sizes to match the plus sized prices. That's funny, I worked at the limited for a very short time, years and years ago, but they had this basic blouse they sold every day for like, $19.99. At Christmas time they put a big sign on them that said special price $25.99. And I guess technically it was a special price. We used to throw any donuts, bagels, or muffins out at the end of every night at Dunkin'. One week around Christmas time we would donate the food. But other than that it was all waste. And if we took any home ourselves we would get charged for it. I work at fast food restaurant and we had the same situation here. We are not allowed to take leftover food for ourselves because that is regarded as theft according to protocols and our old boss. Ever since we got a new boss everyone, even the managers and our new boss stopped caring and sometimes eat the leftovers instead of just throwing it away to the waste bin. There's a ton of employee theft that occurs at certain furniture outlets. Employee wants a new couch, then just type up an invoice saying this $3,000 sofa was damaged while being moved around the showroom and it was then discounted and sold for $299. Got a sectional that was delivered but doesn't show up on your inventory sheet? Just take it home and post it on Facebook Marketplace. One guy was even so brazen that he would sell something, then fudge the numbers to make it look like it was sold at a lower price and pocket the difference. For instance a sofa is listed at $1000 but it's been sitting for a while so he has some leeway to offer a discount. Well here comes a customer and buys the sofa for $1000. The salesman reports that the customer negotiated the price down to $800 and he pockets the extra $200. That particular guy got so confident that he could get away with anything, that he even started taking cuts off sales that were made with credit debit cards. Someone comes in and buys a sofa for $1000 on a credit card. He then writes that the customer came back the same day and complained about a rip in one of the cushions so he issued a $150 cash refund to please the customer. That dude stole into the $10,000 of dollars and got away with it for years. When the regional management finally figured it out, they just fired the guy and kept the whole incident quiet. Porn shop. If you pawn or sell your laptop, phone or camera delete nudes or personal pictures. I had a boss that would go through each device. This idiot would go through and try to show me pics like I gave a frick. And he legally could because the customer signs a waiver. Delete your crap peeps. 
Not sure if this is a secret but worked in payments industry for one of the major firms and the tech is absolute dog shit. Banks and payment firms have some of the oldest, most broken tech around. I worked in IT for a bank and confirmed this. They just build an interop layer for the new tech to talk to the old. Their whole architecture is like an onion, layer upon layer of systems. So worked for ESPN for years. They used to charge people to be an insider, which gave you fantasy advice if you sent an email. Those experts were myself and other randoms here in Omaha, nay in a call center. No training just our opinions Lomeo. Always thought be a fantasy football guru would be the best job ever. You're paid money to come up with projections that are largely either common sense or impossible to foresee, and nothing you do matters because it's fantasy football. I have worked for a recycler and know others who work in waste management. Most of your recycling is sent to the dump. A lot of people mix trash and plastic bags in with their recycling and now that most places mix all recycling into one bin, it makes it worse. Once a batch of recycling is considered contaminated, the whole thing is sent to the dump. Plastic isn't nearly as recyclable as the bottle says it is. Metal is the only thing that can be recycled efficiently and cost effectively. The security company that I used to work for, their logo is a yellow horse and the name rhymes with Saladin. They've been the target of numerous lawsuits from former employees because of working conditions, abusive behavior from management, and forcing employees to work way I beyond the end of their shifts. They tried to reprimand me for going to a job interview with another company. The lady that used to run the Halifax office slept around with a number of employees. This was confirmed by a few people including a supervisor and CSM that left. They forced a guard to work an overtime shift whilst he was suffering from a ruptured testicle after being kicked by an irate hospital patient. They also tried to force another employee to work while she was suffering a gallbladder attack. They only relented when a police officer who was on site reminded them that it was illegal for them to force someone to work while they were ill. Used to work for Walmart. Horrible start already, I know. They purposely underscheduled your hours, so you wouldn't qualify for full-time benefits. Let me explain. I was hired on as a full-timer. I found out the company offers different levels of benefits, including health insurance if you're full-time compared to part-time. I don't remember the specifics, but part-timers got limited dental and vision only included partial purchase of frames. Full-timers got full dental and everything was included in your vision plan. The doctor visit, the prescription, full frame purchase, etc. Well, in order to be considered full-time you need to work more than 33 hours consistently for 3 months. If you're anything less than 33 hours, you're considered part-time. My schedule was always 33 hours or more for exactly 2 months and 3 weeks. My very last work week of the 3 month time period would be 32.5 hours exactly and each and every 3 months this would happen. I had asked my manager why this kept happening, and she lied to my face, every time. Different excuses each time too, saying the store manager didn't allow overtime or how the company didn't have any extra hours to give, or say the store manager didn't project for any additional hours for our department. But the biggest one is that we'd get in trouble if we worked even one minute over. We had to constantly check our hours and if we stayed late one day, they'd force us to leave early on that last week, but usually they'd force us to take longer lunches, essentially screwing the other people in our department. Oh, and the biggest issue was, let's say you finally work for 3 months straight at 33 hours or over, and quality for full time benefits. If on your next 3 month cycle you worked even 1 week at 32 hours, you'd go back to part time benefits. You'd lose your full time benefit status really quickly. This happened to many other co-workers I knew. I used to remodel pizza huts, Arby's, Wendy's, and KFC stores. Arby's kitchens were the cleanest I've ever seen anywhere. KFC had grease residue, but still clean. Wendy's wasn't bad, just not as thorough. The first Pizza Hut had me swear them off for life, and continued to gusset that opinion for the next 20 plus stores. I've not eaten Pizza Hut in 25 years. My kids have never eaten Pizza Hut. I worked at Pizza Hut for a month. Roaches everywhere. Even in the toppings bar. 
I worked at a dodgy UK firm for elderly and disabled people back in the mid 2000s their racket was selling stair lifts and mobility scooters to old people. They would install a stair lift for £3,000 to £5,000. Then keep tabs on the customer with courtesy calls until the old person passes. Offer to remove and resell the stair lift for the bereaved family. Sell the stair lift on to the next old person at full price. 90% of the time the stair lift sale would get lost in the admin of dealing with the death house sale funeral and all the other goings on after a loved one passes. The family would just forget. If the family did call us we were instructed to tell them we still had it in stock but it hadn't sold. Even if they really pressed us for the stair lift. We had a pile of old broken ones in the mill building attic. But who has space to store a 15 inches pile of railing and chair. I left the company when they tried making me force sales on confused old people. Whoa, this really drives me up the wall. My old boss would inflate quotes by thousands and get the contractor to discount them at invoice and use the remaining balance as a credit to renovate his own house. The client would have 15,000 to redo a roof for example. My boss would charge them 15,000 when in fact it only cost 10,000 and then get the contractor to discount him or credit the remaining 5,000 for his own renovation in his own house. I'm pretty sure that is called insurance fraud. Used to work in a UK oil refinery, there's only 6 so you can try and guess the company, and the on-site boilers, which are huge and raise steam to 99 bug, had an issue with the inlet guide vanes. Basically an arm that moves a fan and controls the amount of air going in. This issue meant that the boiler could be flooded with fuel if not enough oxygen got in, and basically become a high pressure bomb with a substantial blast radius. Refusing to fix it, because that would mean turning off the boiler, and hence the entire refinery, the solution was whenever they needed to allow more or less air in. They would use a piece of scaffolding pole nicknamed the persuader to move the guide vane and hence allow more or less air in. You don't need to be a process safety expert to know that a scaffolding pole is not a suitable replacement for a traditional control system. Hum. That's, what's the word? Goddamn freaking terrifying. The others are unethical or scummy, but this one sounds like it is a mass casualty just waiting to happen. Care companies make a fortune by running short staffed. This was happening pre pandemic too. To the point where it's part of the business model. A care home funded to have say, 10 staff on shift per day manages to keep everybody clean. Fed and watered on just 6. You think they refund the council for all those extra hours? Nah, straight into the profit column. Pharmacy and large hospitals run the same way. That's why they look stressed all the time. They are. At Victoria's Secret, I would measure the girls women's bra size. We only sell up to 38 DDD in store. I was told by my managers that if someone measured over a 38 DDD, to just lie and say a close size. Usually if they were a 40 or 42, we could recommend online shopping, but for people who were 44, 46, 48, we always had to say 38 band size anyway, and get them a bra and convince them to not try it on in store, that way we made a sale. Returns didn't affect the numbers apparently, I always was honest to the customer about their size, and because of that a lot of women walked out because we didn't carry their size. But my managers were very number and sale heavy that they would sometimes come over and lie about the women's size if they saw me measuring wrong. There's a lot more about Victoria's Secret where this came from. The last time I got sized, it was at Victoria's Secret. The lady told me that they didn't carry my size but she almost whispered it. I didn't think anything of it until reading this. While it's a complete long shot you'll ever see this or even know it's me and it's way I I I too late now but thank you honest and kind stranger for being real with me. I didn't know the pressure you were under. I used to work for a credit card company and on their applications website, there was a checkbox for priority processing. This cost £10 and ensured that you jumped the queue when applications were processed. In reality, there wasn't any such queue jumping facility. Everyone who paid extra for priority processing was automatically declined as they were deemed too desperate for credit. Camera shop I worked in as a kid. Owner used to make an extra print of the nudes and kept them in a photo album he hid in the back of the shop. Thought it was funny as a 15 year old. Seems pretty fricked now. I worked at Kmart in high school and was shocked at how many women had no issue bringing in rolls of nude photos to be developed. 
I worked at a large organic food grocery store. Most of our produce wasn't organic. Amish people would buy produce, slap a certified organic sticker on them, and sell them to us. We knew it but it didn't stop us because it meant much higher profits. I went to that grocery store's top organic food rival for a job interview. I was offered a job but I opted to not take it because the drive was too far and the pay wasn't much more. However, when they gave me a tour, the same Amish produce seller was there. I asked the store manager, is all of your produce organic? She smiled and said, all of our produce is labeled organic. So what do you think I said? I think I recognize those Amish people from my previous job. And she laughed about that for about 10 minutes. Organic food is such a sham. The Amish also run puppy mills. I get everyone needs money but I just can't get on board with puppy mills to accomplish that. I worked for Huawei for 15 years. We have recycling bins at the pumps, in front of the store, in the store. It's single stream recycling. That means nothing should be bagged. Anytime one bag is thrown in the recycling dumpster the entire dumpster will go to landfill and we get charged something like $500. Out of 900 stores, not a single one recycles. None of the glass or plastic or paper gets recycled. None of the cardboard. Nothing. I worked at a financial betting company. Basically, customers bet on the movement of stocks, rather than actually buying and selling them. Officially, the company made money from a commission charged for each bet. But this is how the company actually made money. There were a very small percentage of customers who always won their bets, almost certainly because of insider information. Whenever one of these people made a bet, the company placed the same bet, often for millions. I've since learned this is pretty common for any gambling business, but it shocked me at the time. There's also a small percentage of customers who always lose their bets, and they get made mods of our Wall Street buds. A vast, including paid versions, sells your data, phone and email mostly, to a third party scam company that will call you and tell you that your computer isn't working properly. Then they'll charge you $100 an hour for a remote fix. For more than a decade this team was a subsidiary of a vast and accounted for more than 80% of the company revenue. I quit a few years ago after this started a huge argument at my table during a Christmas party. One of many reasons I freaking despise third party antivirus software. Most clothes that get donated to Goodwill get thrown out. At a normal store they go through donations and if it isn't good enough stains or tears on clothes, electronics that don't work, act. Or if it's been in the store for a month it gets sent to a Goodwill outlet store. Those are cheaper but a lot of things still don't get bought there. If they're at the outlet store for long enough they're just thrown out. You wouldn't think it would be that many clothes. But in the few months I worked there about half our donations got sent to the outlet stores and most of the stuff there gets thrown out eventually. Also please don't donate your CM socks to Goodwill. There is a Goodwill outlet right next to a Goodwill near me. They share the same entrance. The Goodwill outlet is basically the same as what's on the Goodwill side but with no organization. It's just tossed in bins or on areas of the floor for furniture and things like that. I found a huge brand new canal cab there once for $6 but mostly it's just junk. Regal cutting tool. They would buy drill bits and taps from Korea. Buff off the word Korea and etch USA. Then sail these drill bits and taps to USA aerospace companies like NASA, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin. Pretty sure you can get a sizable reward from the US government if you can prove this specifically per NASA. The owner's freaking the secretary, the secretary's husband is freaking the secretary's sister, the owner's wife is freaking the third shift supervisor and HR is freaking the second shift die setter and smoking M out in the weird little gap between the loading dock and the maintenance building. I know this because I used to frick the secretary until I found out she had a husband and was freaking the owner and me. Sounds like a generously run family business. I used to work for Lowe's in the contact center, not the store. Absolutely no one knows where your package is. What you see on the tracking info you're given is what we see. You've been waiting 7 months for your refrigerator? That sucks. Hopefully it'll get there eventually. We don't know if the inventory reflected to us is correct or not. Policy is, if it says it's in stock, we tell you it's in stock. 
despite the fact that there's a good chance it's not in stock. Item not coming fast enough? Want a refund? I'll submit the request for you, but it might be a month before you hear back. Lowe's doesn't give a frick about you or your order, which might be obvious. But what might not be obvious is that absolutely freaking no one in that company has any clue what's going on at any given time. Everything is run completely on guesses. Not even best guesses. Oftentimes just wild guesses. Always use a credit card. If a company like Lowe's doesn't deliver on time, charge back and go somewhere else. Always check the sell by dates on beer cans. Depending on what distributor you get. They will throw an assortment of different dated beers in a repacked case, at least for Miller Lite distributor. Sometimes you'd get beer around a year old and it's not gonna be good. I worked for a large school district. Within the last 10 years, outside cameras have become a standard. What the students and staff don't know is that they also record sound. And the principals and upper admin often abuse and use them. Some even get obsessed and will constantly watch and listen for any gossip or drama. Older schools can use intercoms and phones to listen directly into classrooms as well. Public schools have been some of the worst and most toxic places I have ever worked. Dairy Queen ice cream is legally not allowed to be called ice cream. We're supposed to call it soft serve at every instance and never refer to it as ice cream because it does not contain a high enough dairy content. I wonder if this is why my stomach tolerates soft serve better than traditional ice cream. Dairy Queen doesn't seem to mess up my stomach nearly as much. Brake pads are free after the first purchase. This shouldn't be a secret but apparently it is for most people. I managed an auto zone for 4 years. I noticed the brake pads have a lifetime warranty. Most people think that means if the brake pads have a problem then they can get a new set. They don't however realize that includes normal wear. It's lifetime of the vehicle not the pads themselves. So when your brake pads wear out you can just come trade them in for new ones at no cost for as long as you own that vehicle. Or really any vehicle that takes that specific part number if you're sly enough. It's more or less a loss leader for the company to get people in the door. And most don't realize it and pay for new pads every time there's wear out and don't mention the warranty or bring old ones to trade in or get their money back. If you don't mention the warranty we don't look it up because we're usually too busy or most employees too new to even know it was a thing. Also my district and regional bosses once told us in a meeting we had up to $150 per customer we could use to help them out to create a good experience to keep people coming back. Most employees won't do it because they're corporate book likers, but you could get that battery for free if the manager knows they're allowed to help people in a bind out up to $150. I used to work at a major DIY store and every complaint we got was pretty much justified because it almost always boiled down to the fact that we weren't properly staffed. Like most of the time there'd be only one person working the paint section during the day, which is insane since paint is one of the most popular things we sell. So when he goes on break, there's just a bunch of frustrated customers who'd have to wait an hour just to pick out one thing. You just summarize every trip I've ever made to Home Depot Lowe's. Tobacco companies would deliberately leave packs of cigarettes exposed at liquor stores where kids could steal them because a pack stolen is a pack sold. They'll be back soon to buy a pack. Not just liquor stores, gas stations and convenience stores too. I worked at a convenience store in high school and there were cigarette displays right on the counter. They were constantly being stolen from. I asked the owner why we didn't just keep all the cigarette packs behind the counter and he told me the sales reps put them there to make it easier for underage kids to steal smokes. Martha Stewart hates doing TV and she has a mouth like a truck driver. She is also way nicer in person than her reputation would indicate. Yeah it's come off on TV that she doesn't like being on it. She's stiff and doesn't sound genuine. At Amazon we had a practice called truck crushing where forklift trained associates were asked to go to trailers which were overflowing with merchandise and drive our forklifts into them at full speed to make the dock doors closable. The merchandise was already packed and palletized on its way to customers so it wasn't as if this was Amazon property that would be sifted through. Some people just got smashed stuff. I worked at a Berkram Bee in Fitch in 2008. I don't even know where to start. Sales associates were called models and you had to be recruited to work there. 
There was a look policy and a bunch of books for managers to look at pictures of people who had the Abercrombie look. This was a bizarre guideline for managers to recruit by. Managers basically got promoted based on their ability to recruit attractive employees. Associates who were not as attractive could work in the back and be part of the impact team. Every few months or so the top 5 attractive girls and the top 5 attractive guys would get together for a cast of photo. I have no clue what the point of this was, but it got sent to corporate A and F. I remember a lot of hurt feelings around this because many people wouldn't be asked to be in it. The store did not sell any black clothing at the time. Associates could not wear eye makeup, lipstick, blush, or nail polish. If you had any of these on a manager could send you home or ask you to take it off in the back. The cologne sprayed out of machines in the ceilings and we would also go around and spray the clothes every few hours. Everything needed to be folded to perfection. And the message I got was that making the store look nice came before customer service. The previous CEO has been gone for a long time and it's totally different now. They rebranded to be more like H&M or other fast fashion chains. I don't think a store could survive like that in 2022. Some of the practices were so controversial. Oh my god, you just made me remember at my mall they would have one of the male models stand outside the door shirtless. People I know had to do it, and they were definitely underage and in high school at the time. I'm a software engineer, I've hopped around a lot, after seeing many different production code environments, I'm convinced that the software in our society is just a massive house of cards waiting for disaster. I used to work for a Abercrombie corporate, they have what's called made for outlet product, which is the exact same designs as last season just made from deliberately cheaper material, which they then sell at the same price they sold it in the regular stores. People always think outlets are a deal so they make out like bandits selling you clothes that aren't as nice as you think. Terrible company all around for many reasons, but the deliberate deception with their shabby outlet store sticks with me. Hollister is the same I believe. I worked at a company selling beauty and health products and I'm in charge of their finances. From product to packaging it cost us $13 to make, we sell one for $200 and people bought em like crazy. We went from making thousands to making millions per month. However making that much money in a short amount of time is what eventually kills the company. In call centers, when you're out on hold with no music, they can hear you. The only reason you can't hear music like normal is because putting people on hold cuts into your productivity, so you get muted instead. Usually happens if you're being an or talking too much. Hate the music would like to be muted instead. Panera soups and mac and cheese are frozen. Soup not used that day gets bagged and stored in the cooler for next day use. Usually the next morning the soup is still warm as the night staff didn't cool it properly. Most of the sweets in the bakery case are frozen, not made fresh. Most panneras would not pass an unannounced health inspection. They are usually tipped off that the health inspector is in the area. Sanitizing buckets that are supposed to be changed every 2 hours are usually not changed all day. Source, worked for Panera for 12 years. This was before the worker shortage. How do you think things are now? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.